Um, at the outset, I'd like to thank Bombay Ophthalmic Association, um, Swiss Advanced uh, Vision Technology for giving me this opportunity. I've been using these lenses. Uh, it just started using them before the lockdown and then uh, there was a big gap about six months. And then I've started using them uh, now. And uh, really uh, the previous two speakers have really uh, elucidated the fantastic uh, response a patient gives after uh, the implantation of uh, lucidus uh, lenses. So I'm just going back to the basics. I think I'll be touching on both the topics and uh, doing a very, very basic talk. So the, we all know that the accommodation range uh, when we are young is about between 0.5 to 3.5 and we tend to lose it as we age and hence the need for the presbyopic correction, glasses, LASIK and all that. So when uh, in the advent of a cataract surgery, it's important that the patient receives uh, adequate accommodation uh, too, so that he is able to read without glasses, also see intermediate distance. So this was a, a reason why the uh, uh, presbyopic lenses were uh, uh, made and uh, well, the accommodative lenses were uh, uh, produced with the hope that they'll uh, mimic the uh, native, uh, the natural lens. But however, they were a big disappointment and uh, they had low precision and because of the aging musculature of the uh, structure, it, was, uh, it stopped uh, moving at some point. And uh, these uh, lenses have uh, been largely given up now. Then the multifocal eyewells have been in use for uh, several years and uh, they were still implanting some multifocal eyewells. The advantage is they have very good for distance and near vision, but the, the problem with these lenses is the intermediate visual performance. And we get patients in, from the younger age group, we are uh, operating on younger uh, patients who are computer users who drive. So we need better uh, lenses to uh, balance their lifestyle as well. The another disadvantage with multifocal eyewells were the visual aberrations and the photic phenomena, including glare and halos. And of course, the reduced uh, contrast sensitivity was a major problem. So uh, there were there a lot of gaps left by the mono and multifocal eyewells. You can see that the monofocal eyewells, the accommodation is lost, though there are some eyewells, monofocal eyewells, which can give a little bit of a, uh, accommodation. The uh, multifocal eye wells, there is the patient can read well for distance as well as for uh, uh, near, but there is a gap. The intermediate distance is always a gap unless you do a mono uh, multifocal. That is your mono vision where you correct, uh, you uh, leave behind a little bit of myopic correction so that the patient has a combination of both. So uh, as such, at this point of time, the multifocals uh, do not have good intermediate vision. So intermediate vision, is, why is it important? Like I told you, it's important to have because most of our work is done at arm's length and all of us, almost all of us have a lot of uh, uh, need for computer work. So the EDOC design lenses have been in use for quite some time now. And I, almost all of us would have implanted uh, the, the, the most popular uh, EDOC lens, which has been in the market for almost seven, eight years. So looking at the uh, lens design and properties of Lucidus, I think uh, there's a beautiful talk by uh, uh, Jerem Bowie who explained how it works. There's an aspheric surface here and it's surrounded by a refractive surface. So this is just a one millimeter surface and uh, this occupies the center of the eye wheel. And here you can see this is a cross section of the lens, which is actually a biconvex lens. And this uses the, uh, this portion of the lens uses the EDOC principle or they're using a, a pseudo non-refracting beam. So there is a continuity between the far vision, near vision, and the uh, uh, intermediate vision. So it is able to achieve good distance for con uh, near and intermediate uh, while minimizing dysphotopsia. It removes visual limitations of the multifocal intraocular lens, reduced to contrast sensitivity and uh, uh, for dysphotopsia, again, like glare and uh, photic phenomena, achieves some degree of spectacle independence in near and intermediate vision and better distant vision than other uh, models of uh, EDOC lenses. So this is actually the actual design and uh, it's a single piece foldable multi uh, piece lens. You can see that it's got a closed loop haptic. The only problem with these lenses is if I can call it a problem is it's in a hydrophilic uh, platform. And uh, so there is a chance that can be increased in students of PCO. However, it has got a square edge. So to a certain extent, the PCO rate uh, can be less. I've implanted quite a few lenses, but I don't have a long follow-up, so I cannot comment on the PCO rates. Someone had asked for it, what is the PCO rate? Maybe the other speakers who have the longer experience can comment on that, but uh, that may be the only disadvantage with these lenses. 
So the light distribution here you can see is excellent for distance, intermediate, as well as for uh, near. And, um, and the, it reduces, the, see there is, the, there's a continuity from uh, near to intermediate and the gap between the far and the, uh, um, and the intermediate distance is very less. And the patient usually does not notice this. When you compare with the other EDOF lenses, then you can see that the gap here is much more because the, uh, the extended depth of focus starts from the uh, distance and goes towards intermediate. There's a gap again, and then there is some amount of near vision, whereas this uh, starts from the near and goes towards intermediate. And the, the gap between the far and the intermediate is very less. And uh, so the patient's quite comfortable with this. Just to explain about a little bit about the other type of uh, EDOF lenses, which this is a lens which works on diffraction. You can see there are the focal points are too close apart, which can actually cause more uh, dysphotopsia. I think there was a beautiful presentation by uh, Dr. Rousseau who showed that this, uh, this type of design actually causes more amount of dysphotopsia and lower uh, uh, light intensity. And this is again a spherical ablation lenses which uses spherical ablation principle for EDOF. And there's a multi multiple foci. And so this definitely lowers the quali quality of vision and reduces the contrast sensitivity. And the near vision is also reduced in this type of uh, EDOF lenses. Where is uh, this lens which uses a pseudo non-refracting beam? Where it, this is just an elongated, it's got an elongated focal point. So they're not multiple focal points, but the focal point itself is elongated and thereby gives a continuous uh, vision. And this is a patented technology by um, uh, Swiss Advanced Vision. It's called as instant focus and uh, it's uh, designed to replace a natural accommodation of the lens. The concept is to extend the depth of focus to the creation of a pseudo non-refracting beam. So the brain is not confused with multiple focal points and adapts faster to its new vision without visual discomfort. So this is an animation which shows like how when the light hits the central aspheric portion and it uh, comes into the eye and it becomes a pseudo non-diffracting beam. So there, there, is a, there is a continuous uh, um, uh, extended depth of focus here. But at the same time, the loss of light is also uh, uh, not, is, uh, not seen as you would see in another uh, extended depth of focus lenses. So there's a continuous peak of light in the in, uh, intermediate as well as in the near uh, zone as well. And the peripheral uh, portion of the lens works for far distance. So the benefits are a continuous vision for near to intermediate. Intermediate to distant vision gap is less noticeable by the patient, allows the patient to perceive a full accommodation from near to distant vision without noticeable drops and the constant quality of vision along the EDOF. So when they compared it with other lenses which are in the market now, the spherical ablation lenses, so you can see the lens which is made with silicon, the, the incidence of dysphotopsia is definitely lower, but the image quality is poorer when compared to the EDOF lens, based, uh, the Lucidus. And there's a lower light intensity and incidence of flare and halos were high, higher. Again, this is again high loss of light and higher dysphotopsia, which is seen in the diffractive type of EDOF lenses. Whereas the only downside to this lens was the, the hydrophilic platform. The benefits are it, it maintains an excellent image quality. I've done approximately about 20 patients in these uh, lenses and uh, almost all of them are extremely happy. And I'm sure that we can even implant them in uh, drivers because uh, none of them have complained so far about uh, dysphotopsia and the quality of vision for intermediate is excellent. So there's a continuous vision from near to intermediate allows patients to perceive full accommodation from near to distant vision without noticeable drops. The constant quality of vision is probably one of the greatest advantage of uh, EDOF lens. So it maintains a quality from distance uh, to uh, near uh, uh, constantly without any uh, uh, difference. The no glare or halos and uh, as EDOF is generated without diffraction. So this is a defocus curve, I think showed by one of the speakers, which shows that excellent uh, uh, visual equity at all uh, points. And this is a, uh, an article which is uh, published in the Egypt uh, Journal of Ophthalmology. And uh, they, uh, they took about 158 patients and uh, um, uh, of which some of them are standalone, some of them are combined uh, cases. And they, uh, the parameters which they checked was uh, near, intermediate and far and corrected, in best, corrected visual equity. And at the end of three months, almost all the, uh, at all parameters, they had excellent um, uh, uh, response and the, it was clinically significant improvement in the uh, uh, uncorrected visual equity and best corrected visual equity. 
for near, far, and intermediate. So again, the contrast sensitivity was also very good. Uh, they showed that the peridopsin chart at the end of three months was 1.5 log. The spherical equivalent, this is one thing again, which was, I think, uh, which was highlighted by Dr. Rousseau, which showed that in this study also that only about 66% of the patients had uh, uncorrected distant visual equity. Uh, in this study, they showed about 58.1% of the patients had a far uh, visual equity, was, which was a spherical equivalent less than 0.5 to plus 0.5. However, none of the patients were happy. The, the happiness score was definitely good in these patients, in spite of the fact that only 58% of the patients had um, uh, the spherical equivalent between 0.5 to uh, plus or minus 0.5. They had one patient who had an haptic rupture, and so there was slight concentration of the lens, but the eye trace showed almost uh, no uh, subjective uh, uh, side effect, and uh, the patient did not even uh, recognize the, uh, the problem. So this again is a lens which has had a slight tilt, but the eye trace did not show any internal abrasions and the patient also did not complain. So there's probably a great advantage when using these type of lenses that even if there is a slight, a slight shift, uh, the, the, the advantage of uh, intermediate and near vision might be lost, but the complaints of the patients may not be there, where, whereas in other multifocals or EDOF lenses, if there is a shift in the, uh, from the center, then it can cause a lot of abrasions. So I think this has been covered by one of the other speakers. And this is just a small video to show that um, how an EDOF lens has been implanted. And um, this is a very easy lens to load. And because of the hydrophilic platform, it uh, sits beautifully. And it, uh, it's got a very nice injector. It's a push through injector and goes through a very small opening. And um, it, it's a, it's, it is a little bit tight when it starts, but then after some time it becomes uh, uh, quite uh, easy to implant. So be very gentle, don't push because it can suddenly land into the eye and can produce a PCR. And uh, you can see that the lens is implanted very nicely and it's easily tucked in can, because of the haptic is hydrophilic, can be very nicely tucked in and the centration is really fabulous. If you notice very carefully, you can see the central aspheric zone and uh, that is uh, how the lens sits. It's, it's very well seated, and you don't really have to worry about decentration if the lens has been injected properly. So some of the key points are, the, it's a unique EDOF design, which is a, a pseudo non-refractive beam when compared to the other type of uh, EDOF lenses. And the, the, uh, probably the greatest advantage is it preserves the resolution and the light intensity and the high quality of near in the intermediate vision and regardless of pupil size, though it is supposed to be pupil dependent still, uh, in spite of the pupil size, it gives very good quality near in intermediate vision. Almost zero dysphotopsias, minimized refractive surface and it's called as a, what is called as an in-house apodization model. Minimized loss of light, faster adaptation for the brain. Normally we uh, give up at least a day's gap between both eyes and uh, we have not had any problem of uh, a dineural adaptation. Continuous vision, that's probably an, again a very highlighted point that we uh, need to look into. No gaps between visions and allows for almost a glass-free vision, particularly in patients who are uh, uh, doing a lot of computer work and reading. And uh, elderly people, you know, they, uh, they are extremely happy with these lenses. And very low reported side effects good positioning in the bag, independency from centration and efficiency, high quality of vision, and good binocular far vision performance. So these are some of the advantages of these uh, EDOF lenses. And, uh, and uh, I would like to thank uh, once again, um, uh, Bombay Ophthalmic Association and uh, um, uh, SAV uh, Technologies for this opportunity.